carbon monoxide is a colorless, odorless gas that's uh, formed during incomplete combustion of carbon. Uh, there's about 20,000 hospitalizations per year in the United States alone, about 3% of the people die. Roughly about 25% of survivors of carbon monoxide poisoning have uh, neurocognitive deficits. We don't have an antidote for CO poisoning. If someone's been poisoned with CO, the first thing we do is put 100% oxygen on them. And when you're on 100% oxygen, it speeds the clearance of CO from the body. The half-life of CO in our body is about 320 minutes. It, it really sticks around. It doesn't want to leave uh, your hemoglobin. Um, but if you're breathing 100% oxygen, that half-life is about 74 minutes. And there's another therapy called a hyperbaric oxygen therapy. The half-life of carbon monoxide, if you're in a hyperbaric oxygen uh, delivery system, is about 20 minutes. So our antidote removes CO with a half-life of 21 seconds. So it very rapidly clears the CO with, with this antidote that we've developed. We were trying to work on understanding how neuroglobin bound oxygen, how it bound nitrite, how it bound other ligands. A ligand is a molecule that binds to the iron center of, of a hemoglobin-like molecule. And to try to understand how this neuroglobin worked, we were doing something called mutagenesis. We were mutating out amino acids that were in the heme pocket that were very important for ligand binding. Um, and we stumbled into one mutation that dramatically increased the affinity of neuroglobin for oxygen. So we had a high oxygen binding affinity and then the idea struck us, well I wonder if this molecule would have a high CO affinity. And it turns out it does. And this molecule now binds CO about 500 times higher affinity than hemoglobin binds the CO. So when you mix this neuroglobin now with hemoglobin that has CO on it, all the CO transfers to the neuroglobin. And uh, as an example, I mentioned that the half-life of uh, CO in human blood is 320 minutes. And the half-life in the presence of our molecule is only 23 seconds. So you could think of it as a scavenger. It's a CO scavenging molecule. And if we were to infuse it intravenously, all of the CO just essentially uh, binds to the neuroglobin. The um, molecules filtered out of the kidney. So it actually goes through the kidney into the urine. So this, the, the neuroglobin binds the CO molecule and then is filtered out into the urine. So you're actually really removing the CO from the body. Um, of course, we're still concerned that there could be toxicity. You know, if you give this molecule, could it injure the kidney? Could it injure the liver? Um, we don't see that yet, but this is all in mice. So the next step would be to scale up our production and to make sure that it's safe in a larger animal um, and then ultimately go to safety in humans.